I have a little tiny bone to pick with you about your whole April Fool's Day thing. What? You're like, laughing at people is wrong. And I'm like, what's our job here? What are we about to do for half an hour? We're about to fucking laugh at people's misfortune. Yeah, but it's, in this case, this is people who made really, really bad choices. Really bad choices. I try to be very careful about that. In terms of April Fool's, it's it's a matter of, you know, I'm tricking you. I'm fucking with you deliberately. Aren't I clever? You're so stupid. Ha ha ha. And you're the only one laughing. And I don't like that. But we're like, we're so clever. You're so stupid. Ha ha ha. Yes, we but in this case... We're robbing a 7-Eleven. In this case... We didn't trick them into this. We didn't fool them. They, they, they went up and decided to do these ridiculous, horrible things of their own volition. And I'm like... Oh, that's true. It's not like, you know, we, we set some bait out. And they're like, no, really. You can push this button. It'll be fine. Maybe we should, though. Like maybe if we ever are actually in the same place at the same time, we should put out like a big red shiny candy like button <laughs> with a bucket of popcorn above it and just see who we can bet. Be like, do not push this button or the building will explode and just see how many people get popcorn dumped on their head. Back when I was doing Vampire LARP, I always used to say the easiest way the to... What? The Gehenna button? Yeah, the easiest way... Well, no, I was like... If storytellers really wanted to get rid of really stupid characters who kept destroying their plots and being a, a you know big fucking mess, they should just at a convention put out a big red button that says "Do not push," and anyone who pushes the button dies <laughs> instantly. You push the button, it spits out a little ticket. Hand your character sheet to the latest S to the nearest ST. Right. I and you know what? It would have worked. It would have just, it would have been worked beautifully. It would have worked in burying the coordinator staff in complaints, is what it would have worked for. There are times, you know, I wish that button is, had existed, but like, you know what? Are we going to finish this anytime soon? Because I want to go drink and fuck. No? Okay, I'm going to go push the button. I'll see you later. You know that LARP is a game. <laughs> and you can go drink and fuck anytime you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, if the Toreador meeting's boring, you can be like, oh gosh, look at my wrist. I've got to go drink and fuck. Yeah, but the kill boxes. The fucking kill box. You can leave the kill box. You can hand your sheet to somebody and be this like, you true. know what? This is true. Make me kill stuff. I've got to go drink and fuck. <laughs> Anytime you want. Well, I suppose it's appropriate we're starting with a gamer-related story this week. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's get the intro up. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide airwaves and the Radio Dead Air audience, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here. A little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And tonight... We're going to start with a story about swatting. Swatting has become a very popular practice. I haven't gotten used to that being a term yet. <laughs> so I just keep picturing people doing this. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. No, this is the practice of... I haven't gotten used to this being a thing that you do to people because it's supposedly funny. Because it's not funny. Th this is the practice of uh, calling in... A uh, supposed threat so great and dangerous that the SWAT team needs to be called, but you fake it so that it's someone you don't like, and you get the SWAT team called on them. Now, normally, these are these situations where it's like, well, no fault of their own. They're just some dick called the SWAT team on them. However, this week, it's a wee bit different. Get you the link here. Um, for one, they weren't called on a gamer, they were called on a game store. 
to begin with. And for another... Well, I'll read the story. A New Jersey video game shop fell victim to a calculated swatting attempt on Saturday night. One that, according to reports, nearly saw the victim play an active role in inflaming the police response. The story begins by resembling far too many other recent swatting attempts. New As Jersey area news site Cliff Viewpoint... Uh, oh, hey, Jersey! Pilot. Hey, Jersey, uh, reported... That's my turf now, yo. Passaic County officers received an anonymous phony tip about a hostage situation with shotguns and wounded victims. The location in question was a video game store in Clifton, New Jersey called Digital Press. The story was hosting its usual monthly gaming meetup that one night, ironically one devoted to super cute video games. The county sheriff's department sent a SWAT team to the shopping strip in question to investigate. What made this swatting different from other recent high-profile uh, cases was that the victims also received an anonymous call that attempted to pour gasoline on the fire. The game shop's web administrator, uh, Frankie Vitarello, told a story of seeing a police presence begin to descend upon the sh store shopping dis district, which point the 40-strong crowd of gamers locked the shop's doors and relocated away from the windows toward the building's basement. Oh no! Soon afterward, the shop. Just smart if you think there's a shooting. Yeah. But exactly the wrong thing to do if they think you've got hostages. Yeah. Soon after. But how are you supposed to know that? Because you don't have hostages. Right. You figure, holy shit, somebody got shot out there. We better go on a lockdown. But oh, it gets baby. worse. Oh, is the red dot bothering you? Oh no, not the red dot. <laughs> Soon afterwards, the shop received a call from a supposed fire department representative. Caller asked the store to close its blinds, which it did. After that, the caller asked the store employee to peek outdoors and, quote, shout something to the effect of, quote, clear the area, somebody has a gun. At which point, the store owner My interfered. will never ask you to do that. <laughs> My father was a fireman for 48 years. The fire department will never ask you to do that. They, first of all, that's not even their jurisdiction. Like gun, gunmen and shootings, the firemen don't handle that. The police no. do. No. You shoot somebody, a fire truck isn't coming. If you stick your dick in a pipe, then the fire truck fire is coming. coming. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, the fire department's not going to call you and be like, hey, yell out the window for everybody to stop, drop, and roll. They're not going to do that because you have no authority. They're going to do that themselves. But I love how how the guy on the phone was like, what? Shout out the window. Okay. And the store owner had to go, wait, wait, wait. Billy? Don't do that. Billy, hang up the phone. We're going to play Guess Who Just Got Fired. Is it Dave? No. Steve Dave? <laughs> what the chat? Just, okay. You obviously cannot be, it's like no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. No one expects to be swatted. You obviously can't be prepared for this. But just a little common sense. How do you handle that? Like, the fucking SWAT team shows up at your house because some asshole on the internet doesn't like you. What do you even do? Say hi. Because they don't knock. Do they? Sometimes, no. Sometimes... They just start shouting orders through a bullhorn. And you're like... Yeah. I, I was just watching my Ren and Stimpy DVDs. What's the problem? I have pizza. Would would you like pizza? I just want some pizza. Come in and have some pizza. It's good. It's good. I, I don't. Uh, this is the most not chasing of the red dot I've ever seen. Sort of like she's just very calmly stalking the red dot. I'll get there when I get there. Fuck you, red <laughs> dot. She's like, yeah, I'll catch it or I won't. I don't care. So, I've never actually had to, I've never been concerned about this. I've, I've uh, often gotten jobs that have required me to take a drug test. 
before allowed to get the job. I'd never had a problem with this. I'm like, okay, you want to cut off some of my hair? You want to take a piss test? Fine, fine. You know, whatever. It's not an issue for me. Come here and say hello. Hi, I'm the one making all the jingly noise. Hello, kid. She looks so grumpy. She's, she has kind of a resting bitch face. <laughs> she's the only cat I've ever known with resting bitch face. She always looks grumpy, even when she's not. Like, she'll be purring her face off and be like, <laughs> you know, like, well, I guess she's happy. I'm... And then she sneezes on you, right? Yeah, I. <laughs> you want to go very slowly chase the red dot some more? Yep. Okay. Okay, calm up. Don't put your paw down my shirt. Thank you. Now, I watched The Wire a while back. I rewatched it. And I, something that obviously must exist is that there, there is a market for clean urine for drug users. Which kind of makes really? sense. Yeah, yeah. People, if you're on Where probation. You sell that? Like eBay? Craigslist. Silk oh. Road. Tour Network. There's a mark. It seems obvious there's a market for this. However, part of trying to get fake urine is it actually has to be urine. Probation Not like country time. <laughs> Probation are busted for trying to pass off Gatorade as urine during court ordered test. Definitely should have gone with Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's green. Actually, I do know how to get fake urine because I saw Gone Girl. <laughs> and she actually gives instructions on how to steal your pregnant neighbor's urine to fake a pregnancy. Yeah. Florida. You haven't seen that movie? You need to see that movie. Sounds like it would make me sad. Florida woman tried to pass off a mixture of Gatorade and warm water as a urine sample during a recent meeting with her probation officer. Tabitha Columba, uh, Columba? Columb? Columb. Columb. Looks like it's probably French or Creole. 29 was jailed last week in connection with her alleged scheme to game the urine test, which is part of a probation requirement stemming from her 2013 sentence for felony animal cruelty. So we're already not talking about a winner here. Late January, Columb met with her probation officer and provided a urine specimen. But due to, quote, the abnormal color and the abnormal test result, the officer questioned Cologne about the sample source. Cologne admitted she did defraud the test and removed a plastic pill bottle that was concealed in her vagina. So not only did you try to pass off Gatorade as urine, which, who were you fooling? These, th there's a slightly different chemical compound between urine and Gatorade. Well, they're not testing the chemicals, right? Not only, not only did you try and pass off Gatorade as urine, it's not urine, it just tastes like it. <laughs> but also, you tried to do this by shoving a bottle of Gatorade up your vagina. Yes. Subtle. Dangerous. That's a yeast infection waiting to happen. There's a lot of sugar in Gatorade. Which is, yeah. And all the sugar does not belong inside of you. Well, you know what I mean. Sugar is safe to go in this way, not up this way. It's, it'd be like, either this woman is made of diabetes or we're being had. Yeah. They test that shit. Well, the records. It's crave. <laughs> well, police records do not reveal the flavor of Gatorade used by Kalam. It appears likely she opted for the lemon lime or lemonade, as opposed. You kind of have to, wouldn't you? I mean, if she's pushing fruit punch Gatorade, then it's a whole other problem. There's a black Gatorade. Have you seen that shit? I have, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Have you had the black Gatorade? I have not. I've just seen the bottle and was scared. My uh, 
my former spouse was a big fan of the Black Gatorade. And the problem with the Black Gatorade is, for reasons I will never understand, it causes you to shit green. (laughs) It goes in a purplish black, it comes back out green. And I was married to a person who really enjoyed this. So, you know, bathroom cleaning day could be kind of kind of gross and scary. So <laughs> if you're a fan of the Black Gatorade, uh, maybe it was just him. Maybe it was something else he was eating. I don't uh, know. But there you go. Okay, computer Ronan. I see a urine test. I want to paint <laughs> it black. Nice. Nice. Ah, uh, so... You know, a lot of these criminals we see sometimes, at least some of them, are making the fucking effort. Yeah, it's a crime. But you can at least expect, respect, they do have some sort of a self-employment work ethic involved. Honor among thieves, that sort of thing. Well, at least, at least not half-assing it. This guy, this guy. Now they're te- now they're listing off all the other things that make you poop the wrong color. <laughs> Thanks. We'll remember that. Thank you. Thanks, guys. It's really helpful. Let's hashtag it on Twitter. Hashtag that make you poop the rainbow. Um, Pablo- there you go. Hashtag poop the rainbow. Get started on that, guys. <laughs> This comes from, of course, Florida. Would-be bank robber was drunk, arrived by cab. We've done this before. Some lady robbed, like, a convenience store in a cab. This guy's, And left her baby in the cab. This guy's worse. Well, okay, no baby, but still. Worse than leaving her baby in a cab while she robbed a place. Stan- That's pretty bad. Stanley Getty arrived by taxi, taxi cab and was drunk during an attempted heist of a Tallahassee bank. 46-year-old was... Well, he didn't drive drunk. Well, yeah, at least, okay, he was responsible enough. Well, I gotta rob this bank today, but I am <laughs> fucked up. Let me get Uber. Where's the Uber? <laughs> uh, 46-year-old was arrested on charges of robbery, petty theft, and resisting an officer after demanding $100,000 from a bank manager at the Capital City Bank. Getty told the manager he had a 357 handgun, was carrying C4 plastic explosives, and, quote, would blow this place up. Police arrived at the bank to find the cab driver, who advised them Getty was drunk, and had not paid his $25 fare. The driver told police Getty said, I will take care of you when I come out. <laughs> so I mean, you give a hundred thousand dollars a twenty five dollar fare it's no big deal he presumed he'd be making a withdrawal police made contact with getty sitting in the manager's office he appeared very intoxicated and spaced out getty t- did not follow officers commands and was tased during the incident court records say that when police told him he would be shot if he made any sudden movements he said well then kill me which is not something you say not to the right a- answer. No. <laughs> Do you think being tased is worse when you're drunk or a little less bad? Probably a little more confusing. I feel like you'd almost certainly vomit. Yes. Yeah, something is coming out you of lose you. Plus 10,000 volts of electricity. It's 10,000, right? How many volts is it? I don't even know. A I lot. seem to remember Rick Sanchez saying set 10,000 when he did that ridiculous video. Anyway, booze plus electrocution, I feel like would be equal vomit. Something is coming out of some of your holes. One, perhaps yeah. more. Yeah, it might not be vomit. Hopefully you didn't drink the black Gatorade that day. A search revealed Getty did not have firearms or explosives. I just, the, the half-assing about this entire thing. It's like, robbing a bank, how hard could it be? It's, it's... The bankers do it all the fucking time. I, I got this. I'm, f- I'll be fine. I'm, this easy. I watch Heat. 
I can do that. They give me money. It's fine. Shut up. You're not my mom. <laughs> yeah, you need a little more planning if you're going to pull off that kind of paper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Believe it or not, that's her playing sound. Wow! Wow! I was upstairs yesterday. And she was downstairs, and I swear, I came running down thinking I was going to find her with, like, her foot chopped off under a piece of furniture. She was making these sounds. Like these caterwauls from hell, howling, bloody murder. And I come running down, and she's just sitting there with her ball, looking at me like, what's up? Like, what's, what's the matter? I'm and fine. Why are you dying? Because that was definitely the sound of a dying cat. No, I'm just playing. Okay. It's a weird little animal we got. Yay. So. Bridget doesn't remember me. Aww. I went to see them last weekend and Bridget ran away from me and didn't remember me and I was very sad. Well, that or you may smell like another cat. I don't know. She was hiding from me. She let me pick her up for a minute and then she was like, no, gotta get out of here. You smell like another cat. Maybe. Probably freaking her the hell out. It was very sad. You were the biggest... She hid, she hid from me. Yeah, it's like, you were the biggest fucking cat I've ever seen. Holy shit. So, ostensibly, with kids' toys, there was a product testing phase. Not for the evil stick. <laughs> well, well, normally the idea is... If it's going to do something dangerous or potentially deadly, they check. And if it does, they do not sell that thing. You'd like to think. And sometimes th these, they fall through the cracks, but they're in ways that make sense. Like, oh yeah, I guess they could have messed, or, or yeah, that's, that's a possibility with this sort of thing. I don't understand the series of events that led to them making this discovery. Although it sounds like an amazing discovery. Asda recalls children's Spider-Man costume over fears it could blow up. How? What? <clears throat> A children's Strider Spider-Man dress-up suit. Did they pat it with C4? <laughs> oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. I heard C4 could explode. We shouldn't do that. <laughs> Spider a children's Spider-Man dress-up suit has been recalled by supermarket chain Asda amid fears it could explode. The costume, which includes an illuminated chest plate, appears to have a battery fault, which has been withdrawn from the shelves. An investigation has been launched after a consumer complained that the detachable chest plate on the 12-pound-50 suit has exploded and flown across the room. Pretty sure that's not one of Spider-Man's powers. <laughs> that's more like Iron Man. Yes. Uh, when I think of the shit exploding and flying across the room, I think Iron Man. You think Stark Industries, for sure. As does issue a recall of its Spider-Man light-up dress costume, the wrong batteries could have been included inside the costume's removable light-up unit, resulting in a potential safety issue. Whoa, whoa! Time out! How did that happen? Yeah, how do you... All right, how much power is really required to make a little thing on a kid's costume light up? Not much, right? No. Like, that shouldn't require enough power to make anything explode, no. ever. Well, honestly, with batteries, if you put the wrong type of battery in the wrong type of thing, that shit's going to blow up. That's why those little lithium-ion rechargeable batteries you can get that look like double A's, you got to be careful with those. If you put those right. in the wrong fucking thing, well, actually, it's the other way around. If you take alkaline batteries and put those in things that are intended for the lithium-ion batteries, alkaline batteries have a slightly higher voltage. They can make shit explode. Really? Yes. Is that true? What's that? Is that true? He's not. Dan's not listening. Oh, he's on a delay. No, he is. He's on a delay. He's my blowing things up expert. 
Oh, batteries exploding? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, you can make batteries explode. I'll show you later. <laughs> <laughs> we have a project for after the show, honey. We'll blow shit up later. It'll be fab. <laughs> if you don't want to see like tomorrow, it's because my boyfriend has blown all my fingers off. Please act accordingly. Back to the hospital. <laughs> this is this seems to me like one of those things that should have been ironed out in testing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, warning, wrong batteries make Tommy exploded. <laughs> yeah, that's... How does that get past the test phase? I don't know. I don't know. Especially with Spider... I would seem to think Spider-Man lighting up would be less... Why is that even lighting up? He doesn't Why light does up. Why have to light up? I don't remember Spider-Man ever lighting up. He doesn't. He doesn't light up. Why is that even necessary? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, quite often... Although I guess maybe the test phase was uh, shortened because of the big bada-boom. Yeah. Testing notes. We're going to need another Timmy. <laughs> they don't just give you another one of those. You blow up a nine-year-old, they don't just give you another one. <laughs> Your nine-year-old privileges get revoked. <laughs> you blow up one little nine-year-old and nobody ever lets you forget it. No more children for you. So on this show, we quite often have stories that you, the, the write up alone, you're, there's got to be more here because what the information we're given, it's like something is missing. Yeah. Something happened here and something is missing. And this week is definitely one of them. It's this is just I what what is what is even. Half naked man tried to bite trooper, police say. All right, already we're in our milieu, if, if you will. I dare you to make less sense. See, it depends on which half, because sometimes <laughs> they use half naked for a guy with no shirt on. Well, not. And that's some. Not that's this, some over sensationalizing. That, that, not this time. Okay, good. If I hear half naked, it better be the bottom half. Otherwise, I'm like, oh, it's just a fucking redneck or the situation. <laughs> it started as an incident involving oil and satellite dishes. Then a man took his pants off and tried to bite a state trooper. Already, okay. already, I trying to put these things into context. It's like. Did you ever have Duplo and Lego or, or Mega, Mega Blocks and Lego? I was actually not allowed to have any of those products because my mom thought they were a choking hazard. The Mega Blocks are like the knockoff. I wasn't Lego. allowed to have Tic Tacs either. Yeah. The Mega Blocks are like the lot knockoff Lego and they claim they're interchangeable. And they're liars. Because that shit does not fit the fuck together. That's what I'm thinking. It was like trying to put together... Like how Jem was like three inches taller than Barbie, so Jem couldn't wear Barbie's fucking clothes, which was really annoying. You had to buy all new clothes for your fucking Jem doll. That's bullshit. Right? That is... That is a... Jem's mammoth feet. It was really unfair. Troopers were called to a home in uh, Lycans Township on Monday after receiving a report of a man... Pouring oil on multiple properties and satellite dishes. The release does not indicate what time the incident occurred. When they arrived, troopers... <clears throat> oil. Doesn't say what kind of oil. That, that covers a lot of, like, olive oil. Baby oil. Motor oil. Castor oil. It doesn't say. There's lots of oils. 
When they arrived, troopers encountered Daniel Lee Troutman, 63. Troutman responded to the troopers by, quote, removing his clothing below the waist. And it took two troopers to place him in handcuffs. Upon being placed in handcuffs, he resisted the efforts of troopers to put his pants back on. I think that tells us what an oil is. <laughs> Upon removing the accused from the residence, he lunged at a trooper in an attempt to bite the trooper in the right arm. What is even? Well, obviously he bit him because he was in handcuffs. Well, yes. That part makes perfect sense, actually. It was his only attack. <laughs> So what is it? It's like, I feel like it's like National Geographic here. Observe the wild troutman in his home environment. When threatened, the troutman will shed its pads. <laughs> Why was he pouring oil on people's shit? <laughs> was he planning to fuck it? Was that the idea? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time on this show. Direct TV... Yeah. Direct TV has fucked me over for the last time. Now I'm fucking them. <laughs> but he wouldn't want to mess up his signal, so he's gonna fuck his neighbor's satellite dish. <laughs> really? So he can go home and watch the view after. This is one of those things where you just stick your head out the window in the morning, and the, there's a dude pouring oil on my. Sa I, I'm going back to bed. Yeah. I give up. I, I give the fuck, I give the f fuck it. I oh, look, it's fuck this shit o'clock. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to bed. <laughs> there's just, I, there's a story here, and we're not getting it, and I'm just left wondering that this happened and why. Yeah, there's some blanks on the Mad Libs that haven't been filled in here. Yes. I, I just... Why? Why? I don't understand. What kind of oil? <laughs> we don't just know! Basic journalism. We'll never know. We'll just... It'll be, this will be one of those burning questions. Ten years from now, you wake up in the middle of the night and go, What the what kind of oil? What the fuck kind of oil was that guy using? I don't understand. Our and last... Why did he pants? Yeah. Oh, Gray Mary, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to Our last story tonight. Our last one. I'm Rob Lowe, and I have direct TV. And I'm <laughs> Naked Rampage, Rob Lowe. That's totally be their new ad campaign. That's a template, babe. Oh, there, there was an old comedy routine that I saw on a show a while back about drug enforcement officers in, like, Afghanistan or something. They were burning opium. And the bit was the camera guy, the, the, the anchor, was getting stoned. And it was supposed to be funny because he didn't realize it. And it was kind of funny. But then a bunch of people tried to pass that off as a real thing, even though there's a laugh track on the video. Which is why when I first saw this story, I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. But no, I checked this one out. This appears to be legit. It's from Indonesia. I can't believe this fucking happened. But it did. Townsfolk press feel unusual after Indonesian police burn... Half a ton of cannabis. You don't say. Indonesian authorities inadvertently bestowed party favors upon an entire town after igniting 500 kilograms of marijuana outside a West Jakarta police station last week. When police thought to, had thought to protect themselves with gas masks, they neglected to warn the residents many of whom suddenly found the afternoon a little hazier than expected. God, you know what the supermarket... The supermarket had to look like New England supermarkets <laughs> before the snowstorm. <laughs> Just wiped the fuck out. No Cheetos Every, anywhere. No Cheetos, <clears throat> no Little Debbies. 
of any kind. No taquitos. Taquitos! It was just... And suddenly everybody was watching Spongebob and they didn't know why. <laughs> it's like, I could watch the news, but that Squidward guy, there's just something about him. I don't know. Spongebob to me is like what you watch if you really don't want to be high, but you want to replicate the experience. Like, I've never done acid, but I've watched Spongebob, so I feel like I know what it would be like. <laughs> Residents and journalists said they felt buzzed, dizzy, and unusual as the smoke wafted through the town. I got a headache because I wasn't wearing a mask. One journalist who inadvertently inhaled the smoke-filled air reportedly, quote, had to sit down and have a cup of tea to recover. Bless his heart. Hang on, hang on. The Jakarta Post reports that the police also burned some 800 grams of heroin and 11 kilo of methamphetamine. Other reports say that more than 2,500 ecstasy pills were also destroyed. So they just made a big old fucking drug bonfire. Yeah. And didn't warn anybody. Nope. Didn't contain it. Didn't warn nobody. Just burned everything. Basically, they took what is pretty much in the audience at your standard Jay-Z concert and just dumped it on an unsuspecting town. This wasn't a mistake. This was some kind of experiment. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no fucking way this was actually an accident. Taver says, this is no drug bust. This is the drug bomb, yo. This, uh, this was not an accident. This think... was science. <laughs> or this was some X-File shit. <laughs> you did the Malaysian airliner in that town and people started claiming they saw it. <laughs> the whole town yeah, you going to listen to these guys? Boom, just solved it. That's what happened. You know, Fox News is going to call you in a minute and be like, totally. We need to have you on as a commentator. Oh, I'm not nearly that. blonde enough for them. Oh. I just, what the fucking fuck? Who thought this was a good plan? <clears throat> uh, Cheech Marin? Because you know what? After the birds start falling out of the sky, you'd think somebody would look at, at around and go, you know, maybe we didn't think this went through. There's like animals in the forest right now that are feeling feelings they've never felt before and they don't like them. Or they do. Yeah. God help you if they do, because they're going to want to do it again. And they're going to need to be sated. And if you don't, they know where you are. So apparent, but apparently, if you want to have a really bitchin' party in Indonesia, you just need to plan a few months in advance for some of your friends to get caught with some drugs. And then everybody gets high for free. They're talking every... This is like... There's like 10-year-olds who are completely fucked up. Ecstasy, heroin, uh, meth, and pot. They're just like... Think of the pets. Because <laughs> you know some of these people had dogs or cats. The cat is just gone. It's like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grandma's in the corner like, I haven't felt this way since the war ended. I miss those days. Uh, I liked jazz. That's, that's just a weird day on the homestead. So what have we learned this week? We've learned... Warn people before you burn your mass amounts of drugs. Yeah. Put out an APB. Just sort of hand out some flyers. Say, hey, we're going to be burning, burning a fuckload of drugs. Maybe yeah. you should leave. 
Maybe you should close the windows. Meanwhile, you got a six-year-old outside going, ns, 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 ns. <laughs> he doesn't know why. He doesn't know why. Where did they even get the glow sticks? <laughs> um, or, you know, if you're not going to warn people, at least hand out glow sticks and Cheetos. Right, you know. That's just the proper thing to do. It's, it's, it's party etiquette. Party etiquette. We've learned sometimes you just never get the whole story. Yeah. Sometimes life is just fucking bizarre, and you never know why. Glitches we've, in the matrix, man. We've learned product testing needs to be a little more rigorous sometimes. Regarding things that will be put on children, especially. Potentially explode. Seems like someone should have caught that. Yeah, that's a big one. We've learned if you are going to attempt to rob a bank, at least have the common decency to make an effort. Cause you're it's just, not as bad as the dudes that called ahead. Oh, well, yeah, it's like takeout. It's like, yeah, we're coming to rob... an hour to rob your bank. Please have the money ready. Yeah, that's... Okay, we totally won't call the cops. Promise. No. Let's, we're, we'll just have... We'll just hand you... You know what? Don't even get out of the car. We'll just come to the curb with a bag of money. Pinky swear. We'd hate for you to have to put yourself out. We've learned that yet again. You know, any plan that involves hiding something in your vagina is probably a bad plan. For God's sakes. Yes. I really, I really, really need people to stop using their vagina and the rectum as a fucking purse. If any step in your plan is like, and then I hide stuff in my holes, it's a bad plan. That's not fucking storage. We need a rethink here. Maybe that's think. not that's not storage. That's not, oh, nature gave me a pocket. No. 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 Kangaroos have a pocket. And even they aren't supposed to stick stuff in there. You you are not, in fact, a marsupial. You are not. There's like five people right now who have no idea what a marsupial is. <laughs> and they are... You're not one. Just don't worry about it. You're not one. They're going to ask in the comments. They aren't even going to Google it themselves. They're going to ask in the comments what's a marsupial. Because, you know, they couldn't have taken the same time to type that into Google. <laughs> or they're going to be offended. Because they're a kangaroo kin. And finally tonight, if perhaps the fire department calls and asks you to do something that doesn't sound quite right, maybe ask someone else if it seems like a good idea. Find an adult. The fire department will ask you to check your smoke detector. They may ask you to step outside. They aren't going to ask you to scream about guns. No. Pretty sure, not in their purview. Fire department is not going to ask you to incite the panic. Those, those are things they actively try to avoid, inciting panic. They're not going to ask you to do it for them. Yeah, it, it, the whole screaming fire in a crowded theater is a bad mm -hmm. thing. It's not how they gin up business. Mm -hmm. They don't really like to gin up business. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes they do, but we call those arsonists. Yes. And they get fired. They get fired. <laughs> you are bad at your job, sir. Oh, that was... And again, tomorrow is April Fool's Day. Is that tomorrow already? Or, I thought or, it was like... Well, it, here it's tomorrow. Wait, I guess it's tomorrow. Yeah. Here it's tomorrow. What am I, in fucking Australia? Okay. Just remember, if you're going to send us stories that you find on April 1st, stop. Wait a day. If they're still Snoop there... Snoop. Yeah. If they're still there on April 2nd... However, you have a whole week. Yes. 
it's not necessary to send it all tomorrow. You have a whole week to, you know, do a little due diligence. Due diligence. No. That's something my audience does. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tara. Good yeah. night, everybody. You take care. Go enjoy blowing up some batteries. Yeah. If you don't hear from me by tomorrow, find that man. <laughs> I've been killed. Big bottom. <laughs>